It was the development of this very unique mouse that we could humanize. We can put any functional human cell or tissue in there and watch its function in vivo. So suddenly you, you can look at regenerative medicine. We're putting human-derived beta cell stem cells in there, human-derived thymic epithelial cells in there, studying how they develop and function. You can put human uh, blood cells in there, watch them develop and function. You can now generate human immune systems and understand why these systems develop the way they do and how they function. You can now put cancers in there to be able to dissect human primary cancers that you can't do in the patient and infectious diseases. For the first time, you can study a lot of human-specific infectious agents in these mice. So these mice just opened by being able to put human cells and tissues in vivo and watch them function has opened up every area of biology to move out of mice into studying human cells and tissues. And that's just opened up a wide array of possibilities that as a scientist are absolutely intriguing and exciting to me. We now have the possibility of taking a tumor from any individual patient, particularly patients that have now failed any standard chemotherapy or therapeutic approaches, grow that primary tumor up into 30 or 50 or 100 mice, and we can now test any drug we want to find out what drug might be able to be used in that patient and a drug that might be totally unpredictable because when you're dealing with patients, you get one shot. With the mice, you could get 100 shots or 200 shots to find the combination that would work well. And as an immunologist and a biologist, that aspect of this work was really intriguing to me. And I'm working with a number of cancer investigators on campus to be moving some of the drugs they're discovering into testing in these mice with primary human tumors.